Hello, welcome to my classroom. Continuing with the topic of soil water, today we will discuss the process of infiltration. Basically, infiltration is the entry of water into the soil. This is the process of entry of water into the soil. So that means the surface of the soil plays an important role to determine how fast the water will infiltrate into the soil. So that is what we call as infiltration rate. So infiltration rate is the rate is the speed at which water enters into the soil. So the rate at which water enters into the soil and its units will be then the units of the speed millimeter per hour centimeter per hour so that means whenever there is rainfall or whenever you apply irrigation to a particular field with a particular soil texture now whether water will remain stagnant at the surface of the soil or whole of water will infiltrate into the soil or water will run off the soil surface, it, it, is, it depends upon the infiltration rate of the soil. And infiltration rate of the soil in turn depends not only on the characteristics of the soil, it also depends upon the type of vegetation you have, the land slope, the characteristics of the rain itself or the velocity with which water moves over the surface of the soil. So we will be discussing all those factors in detail just now. So simply infiltration, then infiltration rate, then there is one more term which is very commonly used that is the infiltration capacity. Infiltration capacity is in fact the maximum rate at which water enter, enters into the surface of the soil. For example, if you have a soil surface and water remains stagnant over here, so the maximum rate under similar conditions or you can say this water is stagnant at atmospheric pressure. So when water is there at the atmospheric pressure, the maximum rate at which water into the soil is called infiltration capacity. We also call this as infiltrability. In other terms, what happens that when we apply water to the surface of the soil, either through rainfall or through irrigation, this is infiltration rate on this side and here you have time say in minutes so time is increasing on this side so initially when your soil is dry the infiltration rate will be higher then with time the infiltration rate goes on decreasing now you will say that why initially the infiltration rate will be higher and later on the infiltration rate decreases fastly and ultimately again it becomes constant then it, it does not decrease any further the reason being that initially your soil is dry okay so hydraulic gradient because when once water enters into the soil then its movement within the soil is described by the by you know the force which is called hydraulic gradient and we have uh, uh, very well studied this hydraulic gradient, the role of this hydraulic gradient in determining the you know flux of water into the soil. So when water enters into the soil, this hydraulic gradient goes on decreasing. Initially it is very high, that means on one side you have dry soil, on another have you have a wet soil, hydraulic gradient is very high, movement will be fast and as water moves down into the profile, the hydraulic gradient between the two layers it decreases because now the next layer also becomes moist. 
then further next layer also becomes moist so this hydraulic gradient decreases that is why infiltration rate decreases with time number one number two initially the dry soil is stable when it gets wetted some of the aggregates particularly when you have a coarse and medium textured soils the aggregates are not so strong so those aggregates get broken down then the final particles they clog the surface of the soil or if you have very high intensity rainfall and you know the kinetic energy of the rainfall it may break down the aggregates then the it the aggregates will disperse and the finer particles they clog the surface of the soil so initially the rate being higher later on it decreases so these are basically the two reasons that why infiltration rate decreases with time in fact this is a very important question being asked in the exams so these are two reasons behind it so if this is your infiltration rate that means slope of this uh we we better call this as infiltration or volume of water so it is infiltration rate will be volume of water entering into the soil per unit area per unit time in a unit time and unit area what is the volume of water which is entering into the soil the ratio of the two will give us the infiltration rate now the question is before we study the our next topic that is uh, the factors affecting that how what, what determines the infiltration rate of the soil so before that once your water gets stagnated and infiltration process is continuing this is the soil surface and here we will this is your moisture content theta cubic centimeter per cubic centimeter and here you have soil gap now we will see that when infiltration is happening water is ponded at the surface of the soil at atmospheric pressure what is the picture inside the soil so i'll i'll better call it as profile moisture distribution during infiltration so when infiltration is taking place not that when it has ended so initially few millimeters of or approximately 1 cm layer of the soil it is saturated so that means if moisture content is near saturation so we call this as saturation zone so this is saturation zone. okay this is the first layer very few millimeters or up to 1 cm depending upon the type or texture of the soil structure of the soil the this layer becomes completely saturated all the pores are filled with water there is no air present in it and moisture content is maximum then after this there is a transition zone that means now the moisture content reduces so this is uh, if this is your saturation zone then this will be your transition zone so in transition zone the moisture content decreases so this transition zone
and after this transition zone we have a zone of lengthening where the moisture content remains almost constant there is no further decrease in moisture content with depth of the soil so we call this as transmission zone so here this next zone we also call this as zone of lengthening so this is your transmission zone with constant moisture content and this transition zone so this is in fact the zone which transits which passes transforms water from saturation zone to transmission zone and this is also called zone of lengthening and after this transmission zone again the moisture content decreases sharply till it comes to zero and this is called wetting front and the zone this zone is called wetting zone that means which is wetting the soil so here you have wetting zone and this boundary between the moist layer above and the dry layer below is called wetting front this wetting front moves down if you have a you know uh, say uh, a column which is transparent column of the soil and you have stagnant water you can see this wetting front moving down with time and uh, somehow you can also differentiate these zones so this is how the moisture is distributed during infiltration so first few layers zone of saturation or saturation zone now you you might have a question that why it is called saturation zone it is because the soil at the surface is not stable the aggregates are weak even if the aggregates are strong the stronger aggregates or bigger aggregates they have you know a large macro pores and they those get immediately filled with water so few millimeter of the layer that becomes saturated then transition zone that is the moisture content decreases from saturation it doesn't decrease so much but it decreases as compared to the moisture content at saturation so this is called transition zone it passes moisture from saturation zone to transmission zone transmission zone there is no change in moisture content with depth we also call it this as zone of lengthening and after this transmission zone again there is decrease in moisture content it is rather sharp decrease in moisture content we call this as wetting zone so and the boundary between the wet zone wetting zone and the dry zone below is called wetting front so this wetting front moves down in response to the hydraulic gradient so here uh, this saturation zone and transition zone here the water moves under the influence of gravity even in transmission zone also water moves under the influence of gravity but how this fast wetting front and wetting zone they move down the soil that depends upon uh, you know your metric potential your, or you can say the hydraulic gradient which involves your metric potential which involves your uh, this uh, solute potential as well as gravitational potential so this is how the moisture is distributed during infiltration now see how the moisture is distributed after infiltration so what happens when infiltration has taken place <coughs> that is also very simple so this is uh, during infiltration now we will study profile moisture distribution after infiltration now <coughs> supposing that this is your soil profile here you have soil depth in centimeters then you have moisture content eta so see if initially this is your wetting front it, it in uh, this is wetting front it includes your saturation zone transmission zone and when you know when when uh, the infiltration has ceased there is no more stagnant water at the surface of the soil then this this water 
in different zones it redistributes itself and the stage may come when when you are no no, no more able to differentiate between saturation zone transition zone and transmission zone so if at time t0 this is the situation then at time t1 this is time t1 that means the water which has been drained from here this water wets the lower layers the fretting wetting front moves still down then at time t2 again this this water moves down then at time t3 then t4 so ultimately you see from t0 to t1 <coughs> the volume of water drained was large then this volume drained volume became smaller then still smaller then still smaller so that means if this is your v1 this is your v2 this is v3 v4 so v1 is greater than v2 is greater than v3 is greater than v4 that means as the time passes the infiltration goes on decreasing that is why we say that this infiltration rate becomes constant this is your constant or final infiltration rate we we also use the term intake rate also so final intake rate final infiltration rate one and same thing this is constant rate so now the question is will this water go on draining out of the upper layers into the lower layers yes or no if you say yes i will say no wrong the answer is no why because you know if this is the surface of the soil there is downward movement of water no doubt but at the same time there is another process what we call as evaporation this evaporation tries to uh, pull the water out so when surface becomes dry then water from lower layers start moving up you know then this wetting front may become dry drying front so we will discuss this uh, evaporation process uh, in our later lectures but the question is after some time the drainage may stop so it, it depends upon the uh, the interval between two irrigations it, it depends upon the interval uh, between two rainfall events so this is this is how the moisture is distributed during infiltration and how moisture gets redistributed i i should say uh, better call this as profile moisture redistribution after infiltration so this is very interesting phenomenon the only thing is that initially the moment of water drainage of water from upper layers to lower layers is higher and with time this volume of water goes on decreasing with time so as far as infiltration is concerned Uh, this is sufficient over here in our next lecture we will discuss the factors affecting infiltration rate uh, because that is very important to understand that how in infiltration is determined uh, by the collective you know factors thank you